Okay, so this last lecture is really kind of a, just a short follow up to, uh, a shorter follow up to the last to the last lecture on, like the current landscape of quantum computing. And instead, it just it but it tackles it from an, another point of view, which is what it means for industry. What does it mean for the different markets? What does it mean for the different fields around and i decided to and we decided to end off the first week of the bootcamp for this and the virtual part of the bootcamp for this because uh many of you who especially those who will not be attending the uh in-person bootcamp next week many of you i hope that many of you will pursue quantum computing projects in your own time. I hope many of you would think about quantum computing research. I hope many of you would continue. Uh, I hope many of you will just continue keeping up with quantum computing as a technology in general. But keeping up with quantum computing uh, technology in general, especially without a guide, without us kind of talk, uh, talking about it, uh, without, res without researchers kind of... Uh, telling you about the caveats and stuff like that. It can get pretty tricky at times. So just to kind of reiterate uh, why we want quantum computing again, is because this, uh, to reiterate from the first lecture, the problem with classical con uh, computing is that Moore's laws, which kind of, which has defined the era, this era of computing, uh, since 1965, this Moore's law basically promises a uh, exponential speed up in terms of, uh, exponential speed up in terms of uh, exponential increase in hardware of uh transistor of hardware capabilities, uh, to double every single to double every two years. Uh, has it been experiencing a gradual decline because at some point the at some point, the technology just couldn't keep up with this timeline. And so people are finding alternative ways to improve computing, uh, especially uh, when they can't improve the classical computing hardware anymore, or the, or the improvements are just getting too slow. And so what they're seeking are new quant computing paradigms. And quantum computing, uh, just to reiterate, will never replace Classical computing. Classical computing will always have its place in this world. But instead, it provides it's another tool that is another tool for uh computer scientists, for engineers to use by treating information in a different way. More specifically, it treats information as if it obeys the laws of quantum mechanics. And what this does is it gives you a new abstract mathematical tool with uh advantages over some advantages over certain parts of classical computing as well as many disadvantages as compared to classical computing which is why classical computing will always have always have the place so what does this have to do with industry well a lot really uh the industry is an industry is there to the industry has kind of many goals but i'm just going to uh boil it down to just these few uh these these few these three goals these very generic goals of looking to transform their industries disrupt the, their field looking for esg impacts and uh impacts within uh their companies uh trying to market uh trying to market themselves as the forefront of technology uh at the end of the day it all it really just boils down to to most to most companies is going really just going to boil down to what economic advantage they can get. Uh and simply put, simply put, it can be just like as simple as increased profit, decreased expenses. But I mean, obviously, this is all very uh this is all pretty vague. So I'm going to go through slightly more in detail about how quantum computing might disrupt industries. More specifically, though, I also wanted to talk uh these industry uh these industries more specifically though i also want to talk a little bit about the perceptions and promises of quantum computing this i wanted to include this part because many of you will be starting to look into quantum computing by yourselves 
and all you really all all many of you really had is this uh three day introduction to quantum computing and part of me is afraid that you buy into hype. The hype of quantum computing is actually a huge problem that this field has been facing over the last five over the last five seven years or so. It's been slowly getting people better. People are start getting to starting to get slightly more skeptical. People are slightly starting to get slightly more uh smarter about what questions they should ask of quantum computing and, and to verify the claims a bit more closely. But you're always going to get though you're always going to get those people who kind of like over promises uh quantum computing. And Whenever you approach a paper, whenever you approach a new piece of research, every time you see a new journal article come out about quantum computing, you should always approach it with a wary. You should always approach it with a wary eye, with a more critical eye. So, the promises of quantum computing can really boil down to can really boil down to three different types of promises that come around: the theoretically sound, the investigative with a question mark. And the real wow and zany crazy crazy claims of quantum computing that I hope that none of you will ever believe. The theoretically sound ones would be stuff like Shaw's providing exponential speed up, quantum key distribution is theoretically extremely secure. Uh, I say theoretically because there are, there are some there are some there are still some attacks that you can do against quantum key distribution, and though and the researchers are extremely aware of it. It's just that there is. Uh, there is there is uh evidence to show that it is extremely secure in some sense. Uh, quantum computing is a new way of looking at information. Grover's algorithm provides quantum speed up. So these are I I put in some pretty safe claims over here. The investigative ones uh tend to be a bit more like okay, this could potentially be useful, but it needs a bit more research. And this is honestly where a lot of uh, a lot of where you will be working in if you will pursue research in quantum computing. It's if it's got it's going to change the way we look at optimization problems. Variational methods means that QC can be used in this era. I mean, maybe. Right now, there is good evidence, and there is evidence to believe that, although there is nothing conclusive at this point, which means it's up to it's up to you to research it. Uh, you're also going to have those claims of people making predictions uh, about hardware in the future. And those uh, and those, those arguments can often be valid if, uh, well, I mean, but at the end of the day, they are just predictions. So if you believe any type of quantum computer is the future, many of the quantum hardware scientists or researchers do have to believe that in order to work on their stuff, uh, to work on it. And there is... And there are advantages and disadvantages for any type of quantum computer. So there it is an investigative, it is kind of an investigative claim. Quantum computers are going to be found in many, many data centers in the future. That is also that is the current belief, but honestly, this is, is anyone's guess at this point. Because at this uh until it becomes reality, it's never going to be kind of a sound, uh it's, it's never really going to be that sound. And then you have the wild side of the promises that uh you know that you get from even some reputable sources. Quantum computing will solve climate change. I think this was from a McKinsey report uh like in like five years ago or something like that. McKinsey has started getting slightly better in their quantum computing news. <laughs> has started getting better in their con uh quantum computing news, but uh this this was like five years ago, they're predicting that quantum computing will solve climate change and we wouldn't have any climate change problems. That that was pretty well. Uh yeah, my fa my personal favorite is that someone told once told me, uh, and especially and this was actually at a quantum computing conference, that everyone will have a desktop computer quantum computer. Which I mean, unless some wild, wild things happen in the hardware community. It's unlikely to happen. And someone and that person assured me this will happen within a, within a decade. I was like, okay, five years later, five years later, we are still at a thousand qubits. <laughs> Quantum computing is going to completely replace classical computing. You I some people say it say that like four or five years ago, and so you can still find that in some articles nowadays. 
quantum computing is going to revolutionize and disrupt our industry? Probably not true. Okay, so the problem with these, uh, with having these many type of promises is that these claims tend to blend together. The lines started getting a bit blur. Obviously, there's some that is going to obviously be extremely theoretically sound. There's some where it's like, okay, I need to be researched. But the problem really lies when it's like, what lies between kind of the really wild ones and the ones that you have to do a bit more research. And this is, uh, and so this is kind of what you have to be critical about when you start looking into research on your own. Long story short, uh, the scientific view of things often gets mis often gets misled, uh, mistranslated, uh, whenever you it kind of goes into, uh, whenever it kind of goes into uh industry. And industry might interpret whatever the scientific view says, or especially when marketing comes, uh, especially in market marketing, uh, marketing gets involved. Things can get pretty, things can get pretty strange. I say that this uh things, yeah, yeah. Things can get pretty. Things can. I say things have been getting better. Uh, mostly because people have been getting a bit more skeptical about the claim, uh, skeptical about these claims. I mean, like if someone tells you that quantum computing is, is going to, uh, solve climate change, and four years later is we we have about we have about a uh, hundred qubits, and the biggest quantum computer is a thousand qubits. You are going to start doubting a bit of stuff, and so there's been some pretty interesting things that, uh, that has come up in reaction to these strange uh, uh in in reaction to this hype. Uh this was one of my favorite things uh in like 2019. I think it's dead now. I'm not so sure. I haven't checked it in a while, but there was there was this quantum bullshit detector where er whenever someone tweeted about uh quantum computing, they kind of like uh did uh did a check and then put up a pretty pretty funny a pretty funny response to it. You get the stuff that is a bit more serious, where uh quantum compute, where you know, science real scientists, real research scientists actually come up and tells you, okay, there's some things to be excited about, but you are all getting wildly overestimating. You are all investing far too much. Uh, you are investing far too much into for the wrong reasons. There are reasons to be excited about, but then. Uh, but then there are many reasons that people are feeding just so that they can get get your venture money, and it's not it's not really uh and that's not really a sustainable thing for the field. Uh, I think the this one the this one which I showed previously was also, in my opinion, one of the reactions against the promises because it really uh if you read the article and read the responses a lot of it that sounded like these researchers were kind of done with uh the these researchers were kind of done with people going around telling like oh quantum computers is offering advantage quadratic advantage uh exponential advantage uh it i think it it kind of read as if they were a bit fed up uh they were a bit fed up with it and I mean, it's just a case. It's also just a case of people, uh, kind of, kind of like a over extreme reaction. These people are obviously pretty well respected scientists in their own fields. These people obviously know how to do research. They just kind of, they they just got kind of fed up with all the hype and all the over promises that they were, that they overreacted against it. Because if you read some. If you read kind of like the responses, the peer reviews and their response to peer reviews, they admit they did they did admit that uh some of their some of the claims were a bit uh you know overboard. Okay, so how do we make quantum the promises of quantum computing a reality? So I'm sure many I'm sure many uh companies will have their own uh way of approaching this i'm going just going to talk about the soft serve perspective of things on our side of things 
what we attempt to do is we try to actively educate uh, uh, people about it. Uh, it's a part of the reason why we did the Quantum Bootcamp Singapore last year, why we do uh the point why we are doing this uh book camp why we see the workshop as actually a very important part of our offerings because before you can kind of tell them like hey quantum computing is uh good for you we want them to ensure we want to ensure we they know what they are what what type of deal they're entering and what this also means is also being realistic and honest about projections this doesn't mean that you can't be optimistic about it. We are obviously very optimistic eh, about the diction and I have uh working in this field. We are obviously we are we are obviously optimistic that quantum computing would be useful in the future. We are obviously very excited about this technology. But we want to be realistic and honest with our projections, uh, and not just always always buy into like, okay, IBM says that they are going to have like a uh, uh, about 2,000 qubits in like 10 years and 2,000 logical qubits in 10 years is that really going to be true? I mean, maybe uh, who knows, uh, maybe but uh, probably unlikely given the current the, uh, but probably unlikely that's probably just a very ambitious goal it probably can be achieved in the future but not maybe not not in such a fast time scale and the last thing we like to do is we like to foster industry academia collaboration a very big part of quantum computing is a very big part of what we see quantum computing as is if it's going to be an abstract mathematical tool that other that people can use we need to know how to use a tool and this cannot be done in the and this cannot be done in the austere just within the austere realms of academia to a certain extent, we are going to need people who to start uh talking. We are going to need some cross talk between academia and the industry in order to make this quantum computing useful. And this is the best way in order, and this is the best way to get uh people on board and to proliferate uh the use of quantum computing. To to that end, we've developed a certain approach. We've uh, we develop a certain approach about workshopping, about feasibility studies. I'm not going to go through that in too much detail. We have uh, we kind of incorporate uh, incorporate it into our broader R and D approach, where we investigate not just quantum computing, so that we can look at the state of the art for both classical and quantum methods to really compare them for feasibility studies, and really. People kind of view uh the promise to reality going to be like, oh, as time comes by, there's going to be a certain breakthrough, there's going to be another breakthrough. But people often forget about the constant work and progress that happens in between each of these breakthroughs. And so for those of you who want to work in QC, uh this is a call to act call to action. Remember that some claims out there that we are still at a stage where that, that this technology is still really immature you are going to see pretty you're going to see many types of claims out there and i encourage you all to approach them with a critical eye and whenever you view whenever you see something that seems off chances are it might be off <laughs> please do your best to discard these wild and zany claims and not buy into them as possible these still exist. These will always exist, and so, uh, and so, just be careful of them. Next thing is, your your research is really always going to be in this realm of the investigative, and so that's where and that's why you need to be kind of like careful with this, of this. The theoretically sound, the theoretically sound, uh, promises can often lead to investigative claims because, for example, the QAE can provide quadratic speedup for some classes of problems. Yes, but where can it provide economic value? I mean, that's, who knows? This is something, this is something that needs to be in bed, uh, actively investigated. There's good reason to believe that it might be, it might provide economic value at some point of time because if you can provide a quadratic speedup uh, for problems, uh, for, for some problems, Historically, that that means that you can do some things faster. 
So it's and it's so it's up to you. To, it's up to anyone who's working in the field to kind of find these questions, to define some of these questions, and to work on it. And especially when you have any problems, and whenever you have any research topics that has to do with economic value, that has to do with kind of speed ups and problems that we that we think that industry people in industry are interested in. And these are questions will always be best and answered. Uh, in tandem with industry partners. And so these, this kind of creates a feedback loop where uh, you have some theoretically sound promises, they lead to some nice research topics. After doing some research, some of them become some of them become fact, and some of them you just discard that you you send them to the discard talk. So many of these projects right now already the field of quantum computing has progressed enough such that many of these projects already require industry involvement. And so I encourage many of you who are thinking of researching quantum computing to look to look at these uh to look at these questions. I recognize that some of you might not be thinking of uh I recognize that some of you might not actually be thinking of doing research in quantum computing. Instead you're thinking of like should like your company should your, should your company should your organization be thinking of investing in QC capabilities in the future, and this is kind of this this is kind of soft serve recommendation of things uh recommendation of things if because sometimes you don't actually really need to dive straight uh dive in the deep end straight away you can just actively observe we do believe that you should actively observe. Uh, quantum computing as a technology, especially because there are some parts that are extremely mature already. PQC is extremely mature. QKD is extremely mature. Shores looks like it's going to be uh, up and running in within the decade or so. Uh, there's a long lead time. There's a long lead time to change certain practices, especially of a big organization. We do encourage uh, many organizations to, especially if they hit a certain scale, to uh, actively observe and to actively educate yourself on what's new in the QC community. But it does not need to, but it does not need to be like a full on, I'm just diving into the deep end type of thing, uh, investment. You can also be an early adopter. I think many of you are probably already, many of you are probably already looking at, uh, looking into this. I mean, Australia has recently uh invested a lot in developing QC capabilities and so I think we are going to see a lot of early adopters on this. And not that even though this field has been around for a while, if you invest now, you you are still an early adopter. The field is still this the field is still not that mature yet. Okay. So now how do we really judge the progress in quantum computing? A lot of the progress in quantum computing has to do with the hardware that is available and this uh and the this on the hardware that is available and this kind of boils back down to the hardware conversation that we are having earlier are any of these roadmaps going to uh be true if a single one of them yeah i i will yeah uh if a single one of them is true it will likely be great it will likely mean many great things, especially some of these, some of this more wild claims. And so I think there's you're going to see some conversations about quantum Moore's laws lying around. Uh obviously this uh, there is decent uh there is decent uh proof to think that the growth might be exponential. IBM has improved greatly over the years. I started out when I started out in quantum computing roughly five, six years ago, 17 qubits was state of the art. <laughs> seven, now it's like and now we are talking about thousands of qubits with the same error rate step that 17 set uh, that 17 qubit uh quantum computer. So the industries that are most likely to be affected, well, according to the time, so the high level prediction ish. Uh, for the next few years, and so this what we are doing, what I'm doing here is assuming, this is an extremely extremely optimistic view on if the quantum Moore's law is true. 
uh, because what this I think the, this one was assuming one of the IBM times line of the quantum Moore's laws being uh, the qubits doubling every two years and note that these qubits are more of the noisy ones and you'll see that actually 2040 is not that 2040 is not really that far away and that's uh and that's where Shaw's comes in the first kind of breakthrough would likely be for the agricultural industry for femopoke uh, this is a problem for the Haber process. And there will be, beyond 2040, there will be a lot more interesting milestones to have. The industries expected to see first impact will obviously then be the chemical ones, followed by, and then for the chemical ones. And so that's why you see chemicals, life sciences, automotive, there will be a lot of them being first uh, impacted. And then you start looking at a slightly more, you start looking at optimization, you start be looking at, uh, you start looking at optimization, you start looking at machine learning, and that's when maybe things might disrupt. Again, McKinsey is quite optimistic with their viewpoints. They view a lot of things as uh, pretty disruptive. I kind of agree for some of the chemical ones, some of the optimization ones, a bit more questionable in my opinion, but we'll, but we'll see. And so this is kind of, this was something that we did. Uh, uh, we did, uh, software kind of did on time. This was, I think, a discussion we had maybe one or two years ago. I thought it would be pretty interesting to put here uh, on like the different parts of quantum, of different parts of quantum computing in within industry. Okay, so now, uh, now we are kind of at the end of the lecture and I just kind of want to reflect on what your have learned the past three days. In terms of algorithms, you have learned about the classic quantum algorithms in, in fairly good detail. You have learned uh, generally about variational algorithms yeah, uh, with Dixon's with diction lecture today and Sebastian's lectures yesterday. You have gone through kind of like a taster of what this era quantum computing looks like. And you have seen, uh, I mean, and you have gone through some of the, about how, uh, some uh, idea of how the landscape developed over time. You've seen the important concepts that start started quantum computing to seeing and to having the discussion today about the current landscape today with NIST era, the, where the quantum hardware is and all these things. And so I encourage you all to reflect upon these few days to see what you might and what you would think quantum computing would uh what what your personal beliefs in quantum computing will be i encourage you all to read up more i encourage you all to complete all the different hands on to play play around with them and then i encourage you all to be excited by this field there is a lot of things to be excited about for quantum computing it's a whole new way of thinking. It's a whole new way of processing information. And it's, ex it's an extremely, extremely exciting thing to, to work in. And so, and if you ever start a research, research project on it, I, I look forward to reading your research paper. And with that, I will end this. I will we'll end off the first week of the lecture of uh, the book camp.